Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to worship at St. Andrews. If you are here in the sanctuary, I invite you to take the friendship register to sign it, to pass it around. And if you have a prayer request that's on your heart, please take one of the yellow cards and fill that out. And Yeshua's will bring those forward for you. Uh, we do have congregational letters um, for our ushers. If I forgot to put them out, they're inside the podium. And if you are joining us online, we are glad you are worshiping with us. There is an online friendship register as well as a place for prayer requests for our prayer chain that are on the website under the streaming box. For any guests who may be with us in person or online, we hope that our worship together will draw you nearer to God. And there are also welcome cards in the pew as well as some welcome bags back at our invitation center in the narthex. As we gather in this morning, I'm sure that many of us are very aware that there are whole communities that are not too far from us that are very heavily damaged by the storm. So as we worship today, they will certainly be held in our prayers and through this week as well. I do have a few announcements. The first one is we have a new code for the back door. So remember that we pass this along face to face or at least over the phone and not by email or text. So in a second, I will ask those who know the code to raise their hand and just take a note of someone and after worship, ask them. Or you can call Mary Lynn or stop by the church office and adjust wherever you have that in your phone or whatever, the code for the back door. So if you know the code, please raise your hand. All right, so ask one of them. The whole choir knows it, which is a gimme. <laughs> So ask one of them so we can all transition to our new code. Second, as we move into October, next week we will celebrate World Communion Sunday. It is also time to begin gathering candy for trunk or treat. So donations can be put in Rob's office or, you know, just pile them up in front of the door. We'll figure it out. I hope you're able to join us for coffee hour after worship. There's also a ministry opportunity wall to consider where God is calling you to know, to walk, and to serve in this season. For our fellowship leaders, please meet in the library after worship at 1115. As we prepare to worship God, let us rise in body or in spirit to call on the name of the Lord. God of the past who has created and nurture us. We are here to thank you. God of the future who is always ahead of us. We are here to thank you. God of the present who is here in the midst of us. We are here to thank you. God of life who is beyond us and within us. We rejoice in your glorious love.
Let us join together in our prayer of confession. Holy God, we are able to turn to you because you turn towards us. You draw near to us, and when convenient, we draw near to you. Forgive us, Lord, for the times we are reluctant, the times we are hesitant, the times we forget you are there, and the times we turn away, fearing you will ask too much. Lord, in your grace, hear our prayers. Scripture tells us that the proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were yet sinners, Christ came for us, walked with us, knew us. And now Christ prays for us. So people of God, as you look up to the cross, may you know that you are forgiven. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let us pass the peace to one another. <laughs> Good morning, guys. How are you? Awesome. Awesome. Have you guys ever stopped late at night, if you're allowed to stay up late, and looked at the stars in the sky? I have a little Jesus. You know what? That's pretty much it. That's the whole thing. Every week, it's a little bit of Jesus in a slightly different way. You got it, Dashiell. Off my job. <laughs> the stars are really beautiful at night. If you ever get a chance, go look at them. But what's also amazing is that when we think about stars in Scripture, there are stories about how, you know, you ever hear about three guys who followed a star? Yeah? Okay, there's a story about that. But there are also stories about how people followed God's promise this little itty bitty tiny grain of hope of a promise. And it led them on this journey that was beautiful and had all kinds of adventure, ups and downs. In the same way, we're walking with a little bit of hope with God as well on a journey and a promise. And I thought it would be great to hang one of our stars. Well, oh, didn't want to come, it got stuck on a name tag one of our stars today. What do you guys think? Should we do that? Yes. Yeah? Okay. Can you do me a favor first? Because this is like, it requires a little bit of dramatic music, but would you guys all move over here? And Carla, you're in the danger zone, so good luck. <laughs> <sighs> Sorry, I got to stand on my tiptoes. You 
know I did this this morning too. All right, you guys can sit back down. In this week, look for those grains of hope that God has given us, like the stars in the sky. Find the people to walk with in this hope, and look at how God is bringing us all in a journey with all kinds of highs and lows as he works in and around this world. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for the light of night in the sky and for how it is a reminder that you are always working and moving, and that the small grains of hope we are given, we can cling to, knowing you have gone before us. I praise you and thank you for all you have done, are doing, and will do. In Christ we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Please join with me for the prayer of illumination. Holy Spirit, pour out upon us wisdom and understanding that being taught by you in Holy Scripture, our hearts and minds may be open to receive all that leads to life and holiness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This morning's scripture is from the book of Genesis, chapter 12, verses 1 through 9. <clears throat> now the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Abram took his wife, Sari, and his brother's son, Lot, and all the possessions that they had gathered and the persons whom they had acquired in Haran, and they set forth to go to the land of Canaan. When they had come to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land to the place at Shechem, to the oak tree of Morah. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there, he moved on to the hill country on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and invoked the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed on by stages toward the Negev. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's stand as you're able and join in the song of the same love. the humble and raise them high. You choose the weak and make them strong. You heal the brokenness inside and give us life. The same love that set the captives free. The same love that opened eyes to see. It's calling the song by name. You are calling the song one 
outside and speak the words you are mine you call the cynic and the proud come to me now the same love that set the captives free the same Our second reading is from Genesis chapter 15, verses 1 through 6. Let us listen for God's word that is for us in this day. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so to a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. So we brought him outside. And said, look towards heaven and count the stars if you are able to count them. And then he said, so shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord. And the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Over our gloomy sort of week, has anyone started to feel like baking? Okay, I'm not alone. Great. So I haven't really baked, but it's been on my mind. And my family, more towards the holiday, but we make fudge. Who likes fudge? All right, there we go. I remember when I was really young being set in front of this greased pan with a spatula and told to be ready. And then when mom dumped the hot fudge in, it was my job to quickly smooth it out so it would look nice and pretty. 
When I got older, I was given the job of stirring in the chocolate, which was really good for building a little bit of arm strength. So after I moved to Pennsylvania and the holidays drew near, I decided I wanted to make some fudge. So I had the secret family recipe that somehow is exactly the same as the one on the back of the marshmallow cream jar at the grocery store. <laughs> and I got all of the ingredients and set them out on the counter, and the pan and the Pyrex dish were all ready, so I was ready to start. And I melted the butter and I stirred in the sugar, and then I took a quick phone call and I came back to find that the sugar was burned on the bottom of the pan. Anyone done that? Okay. So I started over. I got a new pan, didn't want to clean it. So this time I turned my phone off. I kept my eyes on this bubbling butter and sugar, and I stirred, and I kept stirring, and I got the chocolate and the marshmallow cream all mixed in, and I poured it in the pan. But I could tell that something was wrong with the texture. So I rechecked the recipe, going back over every step in my mind, and I finally figured out I forgot the vanilla. So I left the pan on the counter, and I turned off the kitchen lights, and I called it a night. The next day, I decided to try one more time. So this time, I called mom first and went through the recipe step by step, talking about the weather and the type of the stove. And this time, the fudge tasted good. Not perfect, but good. So after I've told you this story, would you feel confident eating fudge if I brought some in a couple months for fellowship? Okay, great. We'll try that out. This fall, we are going to ground our faith as we get to know the family that God used to found our faith. And this family is so tied to faith in God that God is referred to over and over in Scripture as their God, the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. So my hope this fall is to offer a foundation of our faith as we look back at the beginning of our faith through some of the stories of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, that we would know them. But first, let's consider why, why do we call this a beginning? It's not Genesis 1. It's not even Genesis 3. We're all the way in Genesis 12. So first, we're going to take a little bit of context and look back at Genesis 1 through 11, because there we see how God wanted to walk with Adam and Eve in the garden, and they got distracted, not by a phone like I was with the fudge, but by a tree. And they took an apple, and they ended up hiding from God. Then there's a refused sacrifice, and one turns to murder his brother, and it starts to get even worse from there. By chapter 6, God is ready to erase humankind from all creation, but there's this flicker of hope as Noah finds favor with God. And so while God prepares to cleanse the earth, God also prepares a remnant in this huge ark. And then when there is the dry land... There's a sacrifice and an offering, and it brings this bow in the sky that symbolizes a covenant between God and all creatures. So again, people spread out, and they began to form nations. On this huge expanse of land, a group of people start to plan this grand city. And it's going to have a tower that reaches all the way to heaven. So we might hope they are getting this to get closer to God. Do you think they are? No. It's a nice thought, but they're building this huge tower so they do not need God. It's as if they forgot or couldn't comprehend that the part that makes all of this good is God. So they try to leave it out. So again, the hope of God to connect to humanity is messed up by people. And people are scattered, and the multitude of languages come, and humanity is again far from God and far from one another. And so we come to chapter 12, and already God has tried over and over and over again to build a relationship with humanity, and humanity keeps messing it up. So here in chapter 12 
It's as if God chooses to start yet again, and he calls Abram. And this story is going to go through generations all the way through the rest of the 50 chapters of Genesis and beyond. So we have all this time to get to know this section. Now it's interesting, if you notice in chapter 12, we don't hear anything about Abram, who God will rename Abraham, before God calls him. God tells him to go to the place that God will show him. But unlike Noah, there's no comment that Abram found favor with God or was righteous. What we see is wholly God's action. We hear God offer these promises to Abram, saying, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great so that you will be a blessing. Only then do we hear what Abram does. He goes, as does his wife Sarai, whose name will be Sarah, and his nephew Lot. They took all that they had, and they go to another land. So we pick up in chapter 15 with these words, after all these things. Anyone who has a little time, you might want to read between chapter 12 and chapter 15 to find out what all of those things were. Because you think there was a lot? There is. And you will find that in those chapters you can see how human and how flawed Abram is. And yet, here again, even after mistakes and missteps, The Lord appears to Abram in this vision and says, do not be afraid. And to Abram, who could easily be feeling a little lost or at loose ends, living in this new land, uncertain about his family's future, he's given these assurances and promises of land and of descendants and of his family's future. And then he's given a sign. They can only be seen on a clear night. And above in the darkness, there's more lights than can be counted. And I think of how navigators look to the stars for directions. And here God's asking Abram to look to the stars and to know God's promises. And he looks up and sees more stars than he can count. And so this childless man is told his descendants will be more than the stars wonder how many nights he looked up, remembering those words from God and seeing all of that light shining in the darkness. God starts again. Genesis shows us how things get messed up, and God starts again and again and again, faithfully not giving up on humanity. We see God's action and Abram's action And we see this relationship forming, not through a perfect person, but through one who says yes, and who turns to God. And through his life, we start to be able to grasp and to see God's deep faithfulness that is quite honestly more faithful than we could ever ask or imagine. So this fall, as we go through pieces of these stories and ponder the wonder of God's faithfulness, I want us also to take some time to ponder that this is a way God is known. God is referred to over and over again in Scripture as the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. It's a little daunting to consider that God is known, God is almost named in reference to those who believe. And as we look to the stars, I did see that maybe later in this week there might be some sun. So later, what if we consider all of the people who have followed Abraham, not just in the generations of his descendants, but in faith? And like the stars, they're more than than he counted. They're even more than they're in our specific faith. They're the Jewish people of faith and the Christian people of faith and the Islamic people of faith. All of us 
look to the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And all of us seek God's light and God's way in this world. None of us do it perfectly. But God is faithful still. For us in Christ, we know that through grace, God counts us as members of the family of God. So as we look to those stars, we can also ponder and think that God is known through us as we believe. That this is also the God of Glenn and Robert and Rebecca, the God of Tom and Bonnie and Lou, the God of Barry and Lois and Robin. And we look to those stars and we remember that God is faithful and active in this world even though humans will keep messing it up. Last week, we placed stars in our night sky painting, and the painting is hanging in the narthex. And it's there, so as we go by, we can look and remember that star that we placed, remembering God's action. It's also there, so we have a place to mark God's action in our lives and in this world, maybe in this week, or in next week. So when you have a moment, when you connect to God, when God calls you, when the Spirit introduces you to someone, when Jesus is somehow known through you or through another, mark that moment. Place another sky in that night sky painting so that together we may be able to look and see God's presence and action in and around and through us. God made those promises to Abram and asked Abram to go where he would lead them. This world then looked to Abraham to see and to know his God. In Jesus Christ, God has again found a way to be with us. Jesus gives us his amazing promises of God's hope and presence. May we consider what God is asking of us as we go out into this world. And how does the world see God through our lives?
Please join with me as we affirm our faith <clears throat> using the brief statement of faith, lines 27 to 51. We trust in God, whom Jesus called Abba, Father, in sovereign love. of every race and people to live as one community. But we rebel against God. We hide from our Creator, ignoring God's commandments. We violate the image of God in others and ourselves, accept lies as truth, exploit neighbor and nature, and threaten death to the planet entrusted to our care. We deserve God's condemnation. Yet God acts with justice and mercy to redeem creation. In everlasting love, the God of Abraham and Sarah chose a covenant people to bless all families of the earth. Hearing their cry, God delivered the children of Israel from the house of bondage, loving us still, God makes us heirs with Christ of the covenant. Like a mother who will not forsake her nursing child, like a father who runs to welcome the prodigal home, God is faithful still. Ushers, would you please come forward? We return a portion of our blessings to the one who gave them to us. You may return your blessings in church, online, through text, so many ways to show your, great, your gratefulness. Would you please Join me with, with me for the prayer of dedication. 
Blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts. With them, we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made for the sake of him Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us gather our voices together in this moment in the hope and light of Christ as we pray. Let us pray. Lord, in this day, we come seeking your light, looking towards the works that you have done in the past and praying in hope to the things you are going to do in the present and in the future. We lift up the burdens of our heart this day, spoken and unspoken, trusting in you. Lord, we lift up all who have had surgery in this past week and are on on a journey of recovery. We lift up Kitty as she is recovering from her surgery and Fred as he is recovering from his. And Lord, we lift up those who are going into this week with surgeries ahead ahead of them. We lift up Todd who is looking at an open heart surgery and we lift up Izatis as she has surgery tomorrow. We ask that your hands would guide the medical staff and give comfort to the families and give comfort to them. And Lord, we lift up our neighbors in the south. We ask that you would be with all who are affected by the flooding that has happened with this hurricane. We take a moment to just lift up the names on our hearts, trusting you hear us. Lord, as the floods recede, we ask that the communities would gather in your name and you would be glorified and that the love of Christ would be revealed. And God, we lift up the state of this world, the conflicts in Israel and Lebanon, the conflict conflict in Ukraine. We ask for your peace in our hearts, but in those who are affected by war. Would you be glorified in bringing peace? We thank you for all you have done, are doing, and will do in this world and time. And we pray as your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand as you're able and join in the song, God of Brilliant Lights. Sing it out, shout it loud, cover all the earth, let the sound of the saints everywhere be heard. Praise the God who has come to cure every broken heart. He is Lord.
Beloved people of God, as you go out into this world, remember that our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And by grace and by wonder, in this world, God is made known through us, through those who believe. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. He's shining over us, he's shining over us, like the morning rises, God your light is shining, shining over us, he's shining over us, like the morning rises, God your light is shining, shining. It's not normal if he's not here. Okay. <laughs> Give us our uh, I sunshine. I really, really enjoyed the, uh, the star racing. <laughs> Did you see I put a thing in your bag? Yeah. 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 Was that planned or did we just get it all? With that money. Okay. I think wow. the things that we had for our Advent devotionals <laughs> in the past yeah. don't that count. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it really it was pulled in the congregation too. And last week, so the yeah. excitement built, you know. Like, is he going to yeah. do it? Is he going to do it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's always <coughs> really funny. so Very good cool. to have someone that has the behind the scenes that knows how to do that. that. Yeah. 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 Y